my name is David Lindo and today you join me in a bed and breakfast in Bangor which is just outside Belfast. I am dying of man flu. We're going to drive into Belfast now and there's a few sites that um, have been suggested to us. We're going to have a look around um, and look at the sort of habitat that's available in this wonderful city and maybe possibly see some birds as well. So this is Ormia Park, which is supposed to be one of the top birding spots in inner city Belfast. Uh, we've only just arrived, this is now what, uh, quarter to nine in the morning. It's quite a nice day as well actually, as you may be able to see. And it's the sort of place for me that walking in, if I was in England, I'd expect to see woodpeckers and you know all sorts of bits and pieces like that. Of course in Ireland there are no woodpeckers, but what we have seen so far, um, there's a bunch of tits flying around, um, coal tip, great, and blue tits, and there's also a robin singing in the background, and a few wood pigeons flying around. But the idea is we're going to have a look around and see if there's anything actually here to be seen. Tree creeper. I tell you what, tree creepers aren't the easiest of birds to see. Um, in London, there's a, there's a few places in central London you can see them, like for example Hyde Park, but. Um, According to the information that we've got for this park, um, the tree creeper is one of the, the birds that you expect to see here and it's, it's great to see it. It's a good thing to check tip flocks in case there are things like tree creepers and occasionally warblers at this time of year prepared for migration. The other thing about birding anywhere, urban or otherwise, is to make sure that all your equipment's working. So make sure your eyes are working perhaps more importantly is to get your ear out this is my best ear this one here get it out from under your hat so you can actually locate the sound I mean, I'm keeping one ear covered because it's for stylistic value of course but um, keep one ear out so you can actually hear what's going on I can hear Robin great tit magpie I've also heard a tree creeper calling just then So uh, we're continuing into the park. We got into a little bit of undergrowth here, which um, looks a bit spartan, I must say, but um, my birding instincts tells me that maybe one day, or maybe in the previous day, there might have been something interesting hopping around the ground here. I would expect to see things like robin and, you know, dunnock and wren and stuff like that here. There's obviously uh, provisions there for, for tits, and other whole nesting birds, which is good in this park. I've noticed there's quite a few nest boxes up, so they are kind of conservation minded in this place, which is nice. What's quite interesting is even the birders, um, not all of them, but some of them kind of look at you in a very quizzical way, thinking, What the hell are you doing going into a city, going birding? It's a good way of actually getting people to realise, even people that think they know what's going on. Um, get them to realise that there is such a lot of wildlife and birds and all that sort of stuff to be seen right in the middle of town. It's not quite a babbling brook, so you won't get the uh, a dipper, but very picturesque, isn't it? I mean. It's just nice to be in the middle of a city and to be in a quiet area like this. It's just nice to be back to nature. As you can see, this little spot here is really very active. It's a bit of a hive of uh, activity. And the tree behind me is actually ram-packed 
with um, all sorts of things, mostly um, tits, but there's also a wren, there's a few blackbirds in there, um, and chaffinch and a few bits and bobs. But there's a lot of activity around here, and it's a kind of it's a nice little spot you can spend maybe 10 minutes um, just sitting around and just listening and watching. I'm sure during the summer it must be great with all the bird song here as well. It's a good little spot. I'm at the uh, Belfast Harbour RSPV Reserve with the warden Anthony McGeehan and basically um, we're just talking about how things have changed. When I came here 15 years ago, when it used to be BP pools, I mean, how has it changed since then? I mean, it's obviously changed a lot for me. But... Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle because the, uh, the enemy has really been Mother Nature herself. Uh, once a place was saved from mankind or from sort of development, uh, it wasn't a case of uh, we've got it, you know, like an offshore island or a piece of woodland and it's going to be that way forever in the day and the birds will be great now, there's no problems left. Well the big problem was the fact that the habitat was artificially created. It really began life as a big reclamation lagoon that was entirely flat bottomed and around the margins, grasses, reeds, rushes, all that vegetation you know, also discovered the place and decided, oh we like it here, we'll actually just take it all over. And uh, we've essentially been embarked on a and a kind of a struggle with the natural vegetation for the last 10 years, which we want it, we need it. I mean, it provides habitat for birds to nest in, it provides lots of food, seed, insects, etc. But uh, we need all of the open habitat and all the marshy edges and all the kind of uh, short grass vegetation that we manage for widging in the wintertime and for breeding lapping in the summertime. So, you know, you, you, know, you just can't sort of sit back and expect it all to be hunky dory. We have to inter intervene big time. Yeah, because you were saying but you have to sort of chop back the vegetation several times during the summer, don't you? That, it's just like the fourth bridge, you know, it is an old cliche, but, you know, it's just constant maintenance. Uh, the, you know, wetland vegetation, because it's fueled by kind of, you know, nice soft mud and loads of, it of you know, moisture, it can expand far more rapidly than anything else. So if you're trying to look after your garden every year, you know that if you didn't cut the grass, you know, for the summer months, you would come back and think, oh my goodness, look at the height of that grass, it must be nearly six inches tall. Whereas here, if we don't cut the reed beds, we come back and think, oh my goodness, that reed bed has expanded 15 foot. And it's grown to, you know, taller than the height of a man. So uh, it's pretty much relentless. Good morning. Um, it's day two and final day of uh, Belfast extravaganza, looking for urban birding sites around Belfast. Um, yesterday we had quite a good day. Today we're going to be escorted by our um, host, uh, Margaret, who you'll meet shortly. And um, we're going to go to a few sites, including starting off with the RSPB um, site, site we were at last night, because Anthony McGeehan is going to leave the door for us so we can nip in <coughs> and observe the uh, waiters close up. Did you get the uh, menu for the day? Did you not? Well, uh, today's special is duck soup, uh, stickleback sushi, frog's legs and brine, what's that, escargot, al dente, daddy long legs, happy meal. And there is a vegetarian option. What is it? Assorted seeds, grass and goose foot. Isn't that nice? How do, how do they get to cook all this stuff then? We don't tell you all our secrets here. <laughs> I mean, they just looked the same to me as a non-birder, you know? And then I got a book out of the library, a child's book, 
and it said the way to tell a blue chit was to look for the black mascara running through its eye. And I thought, right. So I went into his back garden and yeah. looked at that. I thought, isn't that wonderful? Is it true? Absolutely. And I, from that point there, <laughs> from that point there, I had no trouble. It's really interesting because it's quite murky. The sun's coming out and burning it off a bit, so it's one of those classic autumnal mornings where you could potentially find some interesting migrants. And uh, myself and Margaret have been um, uh, trying to count the number of birds down here. Margaret's had how many uh, uh, sandwich turns? Uh, about 20 sandwich turns and uh, about 66 uh, great crested greaves and six megansers. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's all looking pretty good. So uh, this is Victoria Park and a very interesting place too. Totally off the map. It's been quite a large lake which I'm sure might attract some good wild fowl down again. But we shall have a look. There's, as you can see, there's quite a few um, grey lag geese. The grey lag geese are, well, these ones especially are feral, not wild birds. So it's possible to walk all the way around the lake, as Margaret says. Um, we won't do that today because. We have luck on our side and we feel that we need to go somewhere else today. Would you reckon, Michael? Yes, yes, definitely. We're at, uh, we're at Belmont Park. Belmont Park? Yes, Belmont Park. Yeah, Belmont Park. In, West, in East Belfast. East Belfast. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a nice coniferous area we're in. Um, it's just off the beaten track in terms of our sort of list of places to go to. It's somewhere that Margaret just suggested because she happened to get married. She got married, should I say, um, not too far away from here at Belmont Church. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, Presbyterian Church. A couple of years ago. Just a few, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, what do you think we expect to see here? Have you been birding here before? No, I have never been birding here before. But uh, from when we have got here, we have seen lots of small birds. Uh, I think you would see probably all the small birds if we had time to, um, uh, to see around the place. Of course, we've seen the usual magpies and things like that. Yeah. But I think small birds in the conifers, we might even pick some uh, long-tailed tits up somewhere around here. Yeah, I, I agree, actually. Yeah. If you great tips and stuff flying around. So we're going to yeah. have a look, look around and then we'll go back to our schedule. Okay. All right, let's go. There we go. Beaver Forest, also known, actually Beaver is spelled B-E-L-V-O-I-R, which to me sounds like Belvoir, but Beaver, as the locals call it, um, also known as Jay City because there's about a million Jays here. Now we're going to go into the RSPB 
sub headquarters here and there's a bet on because I reckon I can get us all a cup of tea if I just play the um, bird card. So um, we're going to go in there and see if we can get that tea out of them. Even though I'm supposed to be getting the tea, it looks like Margaret's taking Here's over. There's a nice so. backdrop. There's um, some cool tits feeding on the bird feeding. Mm -hmm. It sounds as if he's throwing you a kiss. <laughs> he's laughing. <laughs> you see, he's laughing. That's how I go. Is that some sort of bird of prey? It is a snowy eye. Is it? Yeah. Well, I never heard one. I've never yeah, seen one before. Yeah. See, everyone doubted me, but we couldn't get a cup of tea, right? We went into the RSPB headquarters, got a cup of tea, no biscuits, but a cup of tea, and also we had the opportunity of going into someone's office to wait for a red squirrel. I mean, you know, how good is that? And I was totally doubted. So there you go. The power of persuasion works again. <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's Friday, it's now 4.30 and we've had our two days in Belfast. Today was a little less, I mean it was good in terms of going to various places but we perhaps saw fewer kind of urban places and more suburban, sort of almost uh, rural places. But it was still good, hung out with Margaret today. Um, the overriding thing is that Belfast is such a wonderful place when it comes to looking for birds and stuff. And I think there's a lot of underwatched places that um, deserve some attention in the future. So, bottom line is get yourself out of Belfast, have a look around. <laughs>